Howdy folks, last time we were able to establish a socket IO connection between our client and server applications. Today we'll learn how to re-establish the connection if the user for some reason navigates away from the page or closes their browser or their browser tab or whatever. And we'll have them be sent back to whatever the current polls page is when they go back to our page. We'll also learn how to leave the poll for good. As a reminder, you can go to the repository a Ranker course here in my Jacob SN Goodwin and find instructions in getting started, which will help you to follow along. We're going to be on tutorial 21 today, so you can either de-git or clone the branch uh, 20, and you'll be right up to speed with where we are. So let's demo what happens when a user connects to the poll. So this poll will be who? Let's make it four participants. What the heck? And we will create the poll. This warning is coming from React Transition Group, so not much I can do, unfortunately. All right, so we're in the waiting room. But if I refresh the page or say I, you know, open this in another tab, well, we're back to the home page. So what we want to do is set something up that will read our token which we stored. And if we go to our application storage here in the browser, this is where we have a little access token that basically tells us which poll we belong to and what our user ID is. And this is parsed by the server to send our data to the correct poll. Now we could also maybe store our whole poll state in local storage or some other sort of browser storage. But in our case, we'll just have them reach out to the server and refetch all of their data. So as a reminder, if we go into the tutorials, oh, wrong folder, no, we don't want to go into the tutorials. If we go to the server folder and we find our polls gateway, this is what handles all of the socket connections. When we handle a connection and connect a socket, which we do via that token, which is in the storage, so that will automatically be sent to our server or we'll handle sending it to our server when we try to connect via WebSockets, we actually emit the full poll data back to the user. And so if there's a poll in progress and they leave and then they come back, they will get the full poll. So as far as the client goes, we're going to actually handle the parsing of the token or fetching, retrieving of the token. I guess it's stored in our browser storage. We're not actually fetching it and then sending it to our server to reconnect. And we're going to do that inside of the main app component here. So we're going to create an effect that runs only when the application is mounted. So we'll add it between the current state snapshot and our return JSX. And we're going to be doing a lot of imports. So first we'll import use effect from React. Let's see, okay, there's our import. And we'll just log that we're checking the token and sending to the user to the proper page. Next, we have an action that just basically sets an entire app loading state. And that's from our state, which we'll see in a little bit, but we'll import start loading. Then we're going to get the access token from local storage, which is just stored as access token. If there's not an access token, we'll stop loading, we'll return and the user will stay on the home page because the welcome page is the default page. Next, we will get the token with this get token payload method, which will import from utils or util. And basically we'd looked at this a few tutorials ago, but it uses the window A to B, whatever that stands for, but it's basically to parse the base 64 into a JavaScript object. And most of the data we want in that token is stored in the second or first element, I guess, starting with zero indexing portion of that base64 string. So that's just how JSON web tokens are. So by default, we set the expiration token. Then basically, I'm going to see what the current time in seconds is. So if we do date dot now, that gives us the current time in milliseconds. So we divide by a thousand to get approximately the number of seconds. And we'll basically just say, hey, if we're within 10 seconds of like the ending time of the poll, get rid of that token. Or if the, the token is expired, sorry, we're past the end date of the token. And as a reminder, the 
end date or expiration of the token is at the same time the Redis poll data is expired. So if your token's expired, the poll no longer exists. Anyway, if the token's expired or nearly expired, we'll set actions.stop loading. We'll remove that from local storage so this process doesn't happen repeatedly and we'll exit this function and stay on the home page. However, if there is a valid token that's not near expiration or past expiration, we are going to set the access token our poll in our poll with the method we already laid out or created called set poll access token. And then we will call initialize socket again. So let's just take this for a spin and we'll find that it's not quite working. And here's why. So if you reload the page and let's load our application state with a Redux dev tools, we're using a state management tool called Valtio, but it lets us use the dev tool. So let me just do a hard refresh so you can see. I think I must have deleted the access token there, but you can see there's a problem with the loader just staying there. So let's do Y, Jacob, and we'll create it. And then I'm just going to refresh again so you can see this. And in fact, I think I've been using the network tools and I have my connection set at fast 3G so you can actually see the loader. So it loads everything and you should see the welcome page for a second. There we go. This is what I wanted to show you. So it doesn't go to any page and we're stuck with this loader. So why is this? It is because of a bug. If we go to state.typescript, we have a little uh, thing called a subscribe key, which is a function Valtio gives us where we can watch a particular field of the state. So remember here, we set our access token and then we call initialize socket. So when the access token changes, we'll see if there is a, an access token and if we have the poll. And if that's so, we'll set our access token to that new access token, meaning that we'll actually set it in local storage here. Otherwise, we'll remove the access token. So basically what's happening is we'll have this access token, but we don't yet have the poll yet because we haven't reconnected and received it. So there may be a reason I had this, but for now, I'm just going to remove the requirement to have a poll. So if the state has an access token, meaning the state's access token changes, so we're watching changes in the subscribe key, then set it in local storage. And if it changes to no access token, well, we'll remove it. Furthermore, I do not think that we need to actually remove it here because we'll do a check for expiration in this use effect that we just created and that's what we're doing right here. So let's not bother to remove it at all. And I'm going to leave this if just because that helps us coerce the type. So state.access token is a string or undefined and we want to make sure that we only act with the access token if it indeed exists. So once we're in the ifs clause, you can see that it will be known to be a string at that point. Now there's one more thing that I want to do. And so in this uh, app effect, you can see that if the token is valid, we're going to initialize the socket. But here's the main thing also is that we're not setting the stop loading. So see how here we call action stop loading. And I could just as well set actions dot stop loading right here. But I want to make sure that we show the loading indicator until we're actually connected. So remember that we have this socket IO dot TypeScript file that has all of our handlers for like when we connect or when the poll is updated. And then this, these handlers have access to our actions to modify the poll. So what I want to do is upon connection, here is where I want to say actions dot stop loading. So hopefully with all of this, that was kind of long and I was a little confused there, but uh, hopefully with all this, it will work. So let's create a poll. And create. All right, let's try to reload. 
And let's go to our poll state just for C to see all the state. So it reloads. We'll have a little loader here. All right. And we see that we have our state. Now, the next thing I want to do, and probably the last thing today, is send us to the welcome page. Because remember, that's where our poll was. They had already joined and should have been in the welcome page, or sorry, the waiting room page, which is where they will add their poll nominations. So back in the code, remember that our app sort of mounts, let's go to the app component first. It mounts a loader if there's any loading state. So that's that loader that kind of appears on the top of the screen or overlays the screen. And then we have our pages, which are sort of like our routes. So in this pages component is where I want to handle which page we go to. To do that, we're going to add another use effect here. I know some people are very against use effects, but uh, so be it. So we'll import the use effects from React. And let's import our actions from the state. And what this is going to do is it's going to change or be called every time the me feature of the ID is changed, meaning they've loaded their token. And if the poll has started changes. Now recall that we created a piece of state called has started. And this just indicates that everyone has submitted their nominations and is ready to actually vote on the nominations. We have not gotten that far yet. So what we're going to do is say, hey, if I exist in the state, meaning I've loaded my token and also connected to the poll and the current poll state has not started, then we're going to call our set page action to send us to the waiting room. So let's see this in action. It might already be working. That's probably why we were in the waiting room. In fact, look at that. I just reloaded the page and it fetched our token and pushed us to the waiting room. And if you look here really quick, you can see the current page is not waiting room and then changes to waiting room. And you can see the actions that were called. So you can see that we have set loading is false and then the current page is waiting room. But if we go back, we can see that the current page is initially welcome before it sends us to the waiting room. Now that's pretty good, but what would happen if their connection failed, meaning their connection via WebSockets? Well, we're not going to totally handle that now, but we will make sure that we stop loading. So go to this socket.io and there is an event that is emitted specifically by socket.io and it is called connect error. So I want to add a socket dot on connect error and you will have to find this in the socket IO documentation. Hey, in fact, here it is. I'll just show it to you. So it's this connect error, which you can find on this socket instance here. And I just want to make sure to log this and to set the action stop loading so that if there's an error, we're not stuck in some sort of loader state. Now that's a start, but how are we actually going to show errors to the user? Well, we're going to do that next time. So hang on there. We'll also handle general errors that are sent from our server. We'll have a socket dot on error message handler, and we'll set these errors in our state or queue them up. And we'll have a little toast UI component, a little pop up to show that there is an error. I can't wait to see you next time.